All right, and we are live on Facebook with our five VA loan secrets uh, here in Facebook. Uh, very exciting. So uh, I'm Fred Heim, and I'm joined by Tracy Steer. Thank you very much, and Robert McLean. All right, awesome. So today we're going to be talking about some uh, really interesting aspects that you probably don't know about your VA loan. We've asked Tracy to come in. Uh, because she's a wealth of knowledge on this. And Tracy, you actually are a uh, an expert in this, right? Because I am. Of certification or something? Yes. Right? VA certified loan officer. All right. So what does that mean exactly? It means that I've been a I'm the founder of VA Rep Orange County. I've been credentialed to teach an eight hour um, education class. The okay. whole idea is to bust all the myths so that veterans can get their offers accepted and we can um, serve our communities. Cool. That sounds great. And uh, Robert, you've been doing this forever. You're the founder of McLean Realty Group, right? And broker. Yep. Been doing this for 15 plus years and um, hopefully we're here to help explain the process of VA loans and how to, uh, after the, the offer, uh, get that offer through to the uh, seller and get your offer accepted. Cool. And uh, I'm a Navy vet, uh, five years in the Navy down in, uh, in uh, Mayport, Florida. And uh, I was a rescue swimmer and uh, air crewman. And I, of course I had to grab a picture and throw it up of uh, what I looked like back in the day when I uh, had more hair and was looking cool like Top Gun in my, uh, in my flight helmet. So, all right, should we get into this? Let's do it. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna do these as because they are secrets. Okay. All right. Top so, secrets. secret number one. Yes. All right. This whole no max thing. What What does no max really mean? Okay. So prior to January, we could get zero down payment to the county maximum, and last year it was seven hundred twenty six thousand. So if you wanted to purchase a house at eight hundred twenty six thousand last year, you'd have to put down a down payment of about twenty five thousand dollars. Currently. You don't have to make a down payment. You could go, if you had a million dollar price, zero down payment, buy a million dollar home. Um, the legislation actually says no max. So if it were $10 million property with zero down payment, um, in theory, that may work, but you'd still have to find a lender that'd be real willing to write it. I think in reality, you might be at zero down payment to maybe a million and a half um, without any problems. Over the, wow. Otherwise, you'll have to do your research. So realizing that this is potentially being watched by somebody in uh, Albuquerque or, yeah. you know, I'm from Minnesota, I go Minnesota, but uh, we're in Orange County, California. So starting homes here averaging around, you know, just figure 500000 and, and up, right? Yeah, the average price of a home in Orange County, single family detached, is $800,000. $800,000, yeah. So, I mean, you can get into condos and stuff for a little less, but... Uh, but so this no max thing mm -hmm. is really a huge deal for anybody, anybody, let alone us right. here in Orange County. Exactly. The VA loan is the best loan there is. And um, it's wonderful that we can take advantage of the higher priced homes. Now, VA loans are not just for first time buyers or starter families. I remember even when uh, the, the last condo that I bought, right, I always, we were having to look underneath a certain price point yes you know because that was my max that i could use my va loan right and it right. sucked yeah <laughs> and we were looking for va fha approved complexes yep. that would would allow that to even happen mm -hmm. yeah so that's a whole nother layer so and so if it speaking of layers so you add on the incredibly low interest rates right now yep so you're getting zero down mm -hmm. no essentially no max right really uh, incredibly low interest rates. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper than renting. And you can pull rents in your area. There's a website called, I can't pronounce it, is it Rentom Rentometer? And it's super cool. You just typed in what you're interested in, three bedroom house, four bedroom house. Rentometer. Rentometer. Thank you. Well, no, I don't know if that's yeah, no, right. No, I think it is. I think it is. But that's correct. Yes. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll look this up. We'll put this in the uh, in the description below uh, on the rebroadcast re on this. But uh, we'll check right. that out. So we can crunch the numbers, the house, compare the house, just payment to the rents. And they're about equal, not to mention the appreciation that you're going to get. Wow. Wow. Very cool. So uh, if you're not thinking about it, 
Think about it now. This is this is the time. Um, secret number two: you can double up with a buddy. So my friends in the army will know that the term battle buddy. Uh, so so doubling. I mean, we all like to maximize our benefits, especially right. in the military. Everybody knows, right? You try to get the max benefits. Mm-hmm. What is what does this mean, and how does this apply to? So this is super exciting. You know, a lot of people and families and even a couple married couples are merging together and buying property because it is so expensive. But imagine you've got two single veterans, whether, uh, you know, whatever branch they're from, and they say, you know, instead of me buying a two bedroom condo, I'd like to have this four bedroom house. The two of them go in together, zero down payment, four bedroom house. They live in each you know room. They could rent out another room. They, you know, they could potentially live there for little or no cost. And they could pay it forward. You rent out a room to a, a veteran, get, you know, he gets on his feet, saves up his money, and then mm-hmm. he does the same thing. Mm-hmm. So time out for a second. So um, because you can't use – your VA loan has to be used for your personal residence. Primary right? home, yes. But what we're talking about here is if you if you buy for your personal residence yes. and you rent out a room, that's right. totally okay. Yes. It is, yes. Yep. So you could rent out two rooms and then you're living there for nothing. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds Yeah, the rent's paying your mortgage payment or half half of it. Right. You know, and then you're helping out a buddy. Mm Mm-hmm. You're building equity. Mm Mm-hmm. And, and it's the, a win-win-win. Yeah. So the, the the recap on that is it has to be with another person that has... Exactly. A veteran um, eligibility. Otherwise, you trigger a down payment requirement. So for a veteran and um, a significant other and they're unmarried, that triggers a down payment requirement of 12.5%. And they're unmarried. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Very interesting. So um, yeah. So find, find a buddy... Get a place and and get in a house, start renting out one of those rooms. Um, secret number three, how to recycle your benefits for life. Um, I'm going to speak from experience here. I have bought three homes now with my VA loan. And uh, I never really thought about like, well, first of all, when I bought my first one, I had no idea really that I could reuse it. I thought it was kind of a one and done mm-hmm. thing. So to spe- speak to this. Really, I can just like forever and ever. And for the generation that's older than you, it used to be that the rule said you could only use it one time. Okay. So, you know, every year they're changing and updating the rules. And currently, and it has been this way for, um, I don't know, 20 years. You can, as long as you pay off your old VA loan, you can get a new VA loan. Right. So the key is you pay it off. Yes. And in some areas of the country, if you've got like $50,000 left on a VA loan, you might have enough eligibility to buy a new property. Here in our area, Orange County, you probably don't have the ability to buy two. And, mm. and, and you can, it's designed only for primary residences, but later down the road, you can move and rent that place out, but you can't ever... Um, have two simultaneous VA exactly. loans going on. And so, mm-hmm. again, low interest rates. Uh, you know, who knows how long this will continue. But mm-hmm. um, so you can buy with a VA loan, get in, refinance when you're when you're ready for it, mm-hmm. right? With mm-hmm. a, probably a super low rate. A conventional loan, for example, because now you have equity and now you can pay off that VA loan and now you can get a new VA purchase loan. Cool. And now you've got... That Rental available. property, and that's um, hopefully paying for itself and cash flowing because you've been there for a while. Right. And now you have a new home. You're building right. your real estate empire. Uh huh. Right. Zero down payment. You didn't have to take the equity out of the old place and put it in the new place. Okay. So uh, awesome. Well, let's get into the uh, next one as we're ripping through these. Uh, secret number four. So I've called this the closing cost myth. And there's a lot of myths. In mm-hmm. fact, we have a whole document that's available. If you contact us on uh, uh, direct messages, um, we can get to, get you this um, list of myths you provided. Some really mm-hmm. interesting uh, documents we'd be happy to share. But so the closing cost myth. Talk to me about what, what this means. Okay. And, and Robert probably has a different perspective as a real estate agent. But real estate agents in general are older. And, the, you know, you've got the agents that are in their late 50s to 70 years old and they knew the VA no-no and that meant that the this 
buyer, the veteran buyer didn't have any closing costs and no down payment. And that meant the seller had to pay the closing costs. That's not true anymore. There's some tweaks to the guidelines and the veteran can pay their own closing costs. So the seller never has to, or sometimes the lender can pay the closing costs with what we call premium pricing. So you accept a slightly higher interest rate. It comes with a credit to cover your closing costs. But the important takeaway is that the seller does not have to pay the closing costs. So that's not a deterrent to getting your offer accepted. Awesome. So even uh, besides the older agents, older adults that have, older adults, hello, but uh, <laughs> older individuals that have previously sold a home or two uh -huh. have run across the same scenario. And so they probably have their guard up when they hear, oh, it's a VA loan. Oh, I'm going to have to pay. Exactly. Because they just, it's in the back of their head. They remember and they're not misremembering. That used to be the case. It's no longer the case. So you're right. And the reason I mentioned the real estate agent, because they're advising their client. So they're bringing, you know, their frame of reference to the table. Right. And so we have to work together and make sure that the information is current. Yeah. And always changing. And a lot of these things that we're talking about, uh, a number of them just happened in 2020, right? The, in January 1? A lot of changes. There, yes. there were a lot of changes, mm -hmm. not necessarily all of these, but Correct. there were some significant changes that happened in, That's right. in, in 2020. So, um, okay. So number five, and by the way, if you stick around, we do have a sixth myth. That's we'll a, top to a bonus, secret. a yes. bon top secret bonus myth right. uh, that we're going to get to right after this. So stick around. All right. So number five, overcoming objections. So let's talk about this a little bit. And, and this is, I think, a nice uh, segue from what you were just saying, mm -hmm. because you get the people that the older agents, the, un, you know, less advised mm -hmm. individuals. Talk to me about overcoming objections with the VA loans. So, um, Robert, when he's representing his buyers and he's making an offer on behalf of the buyer, sometimes the seller or listing agent says, well, I've got more than one offer and this person's putting, make, you know, making a large down payment and this VA buyer is making a smaller down payment, you know, which is the stronger offer? So I have strong opinions and comments, but I'd like Robert to maybe speak to this subject because he's on the front line dealing with getting that buyer's offer accepted. Yeah, so you're writing a VA offer, and, and most of them are taking advantage of the no money down, right? So you're writing the offer, and you're putting in there, we're not putting any money down. And then you've, in a, especially in Orange County, almost everything has multiple offers. So you have three, four, five offers that the seller has to look at, and there's another offer that's putting 20% down, 30% down, 50% down. So how do you make the VA offer stand out? Especially when you have these preconceived things like the seller thinking they may have to pay for closing costs or the VA appraisal is going to come in low or the, these old concepts. So it really is, um, as an agent and as a, as a lender, getting together and we've got to put this portfolio, this book together to tell a story, right? So you literally is, hey, I want to present this offer to the seller directly, you know, and, and you, you talk to the seller and say, hey, look, this is a very qualified buyer. Yes, they're putting no money down, but that's not a problem. We've got confirmation. We got loan approval. It's, you know, so you, you start coming over the, what are the objections that the seller has back? And you just start overcoming them because I think ultimately deep down, they would want to help out a veteran right. buy a home. Right. Right. They just want to feel comfortable and make sure that yeah. We're going to get into escrow and we're going to close escrow. Right. And we're going to close escrow at the agreed upon price. And so there, there is more risk going that way because they're putting no money down. But how do you tell the seller, hey, there is no more risk to you than anybody else and, and make them feel comfortable that taking that offer is, is no riskier. So there, there is more work to do. There is more... Um, when, when you have a VA loan, when you there's have more, more work to do. Right. So, so yeah. you, you can't just have an agent just email an offer over and go, oh, here's my offer, and then you know not, not do anything from there. Because they're going to look at it and then go, well, why would I take zero you know, down over 50% down? You know. So you really have to be very involved in taking that offer and presenting it to the seller and, and walking them through that process. 
Right. And as a lender, I pick up the phone and I call the listing agent. Robert's making that in-person um, offer presentation. I'm calling to confirm they're qualified. If in a market where prices are rising faster and appraisers are having to look by definition at the history and what has closed, buyers and sellers are making the market, the appraiser is looking at his historical data. So there's always that disconnect. Um, how do we close that gap? Well, interestingly, VA is the only one that has to call the agents and ask for additional data. Also, you know, this is the time to have a conversation with the buyer. The buyer knows better than anyone. He's been pounding the pavement. He knows what properties are available. If he really wants his house and there are other offers and there's a chance that the appraisal may not come in to support the purchase price, let's have that conversation. Often veterans have money in the bank, but it would be silly and their financial advisor would say, don't spend your right. money on a down payment if you've got the opportunity to have a zero down payment. But if the house under appraised, let's say $5,000, veteran, would you want to make this $5,000 right. down payment? The lender, that's fine with the lender. It's fine with VA. You close the gap. You need problem solvers. And that's what your um, agent and lender need to be. A team, we need to strategize right. and we need to say best case and worst case and find an avenue um, for all of those. And, and a lot of times, you know, I'd say probably 90, 95% of the time when, when, when you know as an agent and you're, and you're pulling the comps and you're, you're, because you're, you're figuring out what do I need to offer on this house, right? Is mm -hmm. this the right price? Mm -hmm. Is right. it a reasonable price, right? right? Or is it is a little bit higher than the last comps, right? So now you have another job to do where you need to meet the appraiser. You need to bring your comps. You need to say, because appraisers come from out of the area. They don't know your specific area like you do. And you can say, well, the, the, the comp that you use is across the street. It's a different school. It's a different this. You know, this school has a higher desirability. So that way this would be more valuable. So you have to have that conversation with the appraiser to educate them to realize what the real value of the home is. And you know, Robert, that's excellent. We've got two groups of uh, real estate agents. One are the professional realtor and realtor, and the second is friends or family. And there's nothing wrong with using a friend or family that's also a licensed real estate agent, because at the end of the day, you want somebody that you can trust. But if you're using a friend or family and that's someone that you can trust and will guide you, they don't know. They haven't been in the battlefield time and time again. They don't know that they need to pick up the phone and talk to the listing agent, make an in-person presentation. They don't know that they need to take control of the lender and have the lender work with them and help them achieve the goals. So that's the one place that you're doing yourself a disservice because you don't know what you don't know. If you use someone that does this part-time or that has all the best intentions, they just might not know how to serve you best. And that's a conversation you should have. I like what you said about taking control of the lender. Yeah. Because I think that's something that people think it's just like, well... Right, you it's know, not. I, whatever they say, I just... You know, right. No. Let's go with that. Yeah, you need to work together and you need to... Um, somebody needs to be in control and that's usually the real estate agent. And if you're working with somebody that's inexperienced or part-time, they don't even know it's their job. I, as a lender, do a lot more loans than the average realtor does um, sale transactions. So I get to see a lot of different styles. And, it, and, and um, you know, sometimes in a buyer situation, buyer representation, it may be a newer agent. And um, there are just a lot of nuances and you want to interview several people to make sure you're getting what you want cool. as far. Yeah. Well, one of the other things that, so here's our bonus, <laughs> the bonus one. Um, and, and Robert, you were kind of like knocking on the door of it because at the end of the day, people are making decisions uh, on who to sell their home to based on, it's not just whoever gave me the max offer. Right. Right. There are other things that come into play um, who can close faster or, you know, I just, I feel some affinity um, for a lot of people. Robert, you can speak to this better than I can. Uh, this is the home that they lived in for a number of years and they want to feel like they're giving that to someone that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's a balance, you know, I mean, there's a, there's a give and take that the, the, 
the money only goes so far, right? So all things being equal, all things being equal, same money, the seller's gonna net the same amount of money. Hey, I wanna put somebody that best, you know, I think would, would take care of the house, love the house the way I love the house, be part of the neighborhood, mm-hmm. you know, and, and whatnot. If if you're fifty thousand dollars less than the next offer, well, you know, sure, there's a point, right? There, there's a, there's a cutoff <laughs> point. Like, yeah, course. you know, I like yeah. you and all, but you but know, I'm not fi- not fifty yeah. grand worth of liking, right? So yeah, there, there's definitely that that give and take and that balance that you you have to match up and and, and figure out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this uh, this uh, bonus tip is. A strategy that um, I've certainly heard lots and lots of stories about, which is don't forget to leverage that you're a veteran uh, when you present the offer. Uh, we hear stories about uh, you know, people wanted to feel like they were doing a, a, a bit of good. And to your point, mm-hmm. like you can't have a huge gap, you know, that you got to close there yeah. and, and the letter's not going to do it. But it can actually. Yeah, because you want you want to stand out, right? So if, right. if, if it. If, you know, if this is when you when you submit an offer, right? And you, you just email it to somebody, right? It, it's just it's just numbers and words on a piece of paper. It's it's not emotional. It's nothing. It's commoditized. Yeah, right. right, right. Just looking at I who's, got six which of them. Highest, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna put a spreadsheet out. I'm gonna figure out which nets me the most amount of money, and I'll pick that one. But if there is a letter that tells a story with a picture of of the individual, now. You know, and, and and your your agent is able to present that offer, and you're, mm-hmm. you're you're able to do that. Now they're connected to that, and you're person. bringing them to life. Yes, yes, and yes. they're a real person, right? And yeah. they've got families and feelings, right? They're not just you know some piece of paper, you know, right. that's sitting there, you know, right? And I'm, I'm gonna speak to uh, my brothers and sisters in the armed service uh, services. Um, you know how when you go out in public and people say thank you for your service and there's always this uncomfortable like, yeah, you're welcome. Like it's just – it's kind of weird, right? Um, so that same thing, at least for, for me personally, I find that that reflects into my day-to-day life. Like I don't lead out with going, hi, I'm a veteran. Right. You know, type of thing. Um, sometimes it, it makes a lot of sense. Like when we're talking to other, other veterans, yes, it, it makes sense to kind of lead with that as I did in this. But um, – because we kind of aren't really boisterous about it, I think we forget or we downplay the value of that to others right? Uh, in in this process of presenting the offer. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I have something really important to say. Um, if you don't mention that you're a veteran and the realtor doesn't think to ask, and I had one situation where the veteran, the, where the realtor said, let's just give you an FHA loan. As soon as you take an FHA loan over a VA loan, you're like off the top yeah. throwing so much money away. Not only do you have to pay that upfront, you have a down payment of three and a half percent, upfront funding fee, monthly mortgage insurance that could be three to Four, $600 five hundred dollars, yeah. dollars yeah. a month. So it's really, um, say, d- don't be embarrassed, say it. We need to know and you need to make sure that they acknowledge that. Yeah. Right. And it's and, critical. And just say, I mean, I know somebody probably thought out there that, uh, well, if you're putting in a VA loan, they know you're a vet. No. <laughs> right. Right. There's so many other levels to it. Mm-hmm. Plus what you did, where you serve. Right. I mean, right. it brings you to life. Yes. I mean, because, uh, I was in for five years, right? That's different than somebody who's in for 10 or somebody that has retired. Um, that's a, a very big difference. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, yeah, the awards that you won, all those kind of things. And National Guard, too. Um, mm. So that's just talk about it all to your professional and let them figure out what your options are. And, and I think that's kind of the back to that original point of like picking someone who is a family member or a part time agent that you know, a, a buddy. Um, I'm sure there are vets uh, watching this that also have their, age, their license that, you know, can go and do this. Like just. Don't forget how powerful a tool this is. Uh, I'm not going to say ever, anybody's ever embarrassed about it. Just don't forget. Use it. I mean, yeah. the idea here is to win. Yeah. Right? When you were going in the, in the market like mm-hmm. it is, especially here. Yeah. Right. Right? You were going up against multiple offers and you have to win. And the vets know how to win. You just have to be willing to push those buttons. Yes. And be aggressive about it at the yeah. right time. Yeah. Right. Right. Absolutely. So uh, that gets through our... Five plus one, six 
tips today. Perfect. Very good. All right. If there's not anything else, uh, we appreciate everybody's time, anybody that watched this. And uh, we are going to put um, a link to the rent, rentometer, rentometer. Yes. <laughs> it is rentometer. <laughs> yeah. that you mentioned. <laughs> and anything else that we think is valuable. Um, also, we've got some really interesting information that will help any vet. Uh, you don't have to be using us to work with, um, you know, on your uh, VA loan or in your purchasing process. But um, if you contact us, DM us, uh, and we will get you this information. And uh, we wish everyone the best of luck. And again, uh, because I said it embarrasses everybody, I figured I would say thank you for your service. And uh, everybody have a, a terrific day. Thank you. Thank you.